Welcome to the DD1324 online lectures. In this lesson, we will learn about user-defined and derived data types. In the previous lessons, we've learned about the primitive and fundamental data types, including integer, floating, and character types. And we've also learned about one of the derived data types, arrays, or also strings. In this lesson, we will cover very briefly other derived data types like the pointer and the function, and they will be covered in more detail in later lessons. But we will also focus on user-defined data types, including typedef, enum, struct, union, and also we'll look at, lastly, the void data type. We'll begin by looking at derived data types. Derived data types are data types that are that are made from primitive data types. They don't create a new data type, but rather they extend or add functionality to the basic data types. We've already seen uh, one of the derived data types, the array. This is just a collection of variables of the same name that are stored in a continuous block of memory. Arrays can be either one-dimensional or multi-dimensional, and you can declare an array like this example here, where first you specify the data type, and then you have to specify other parameters of the array, like the length. And you can also give the initialization here, 0, 1, 2, 3. When you're working with C, one of the most important concepts to learn about is the pointer. A pointer is another der derived data type, which is a special variable that holds the address pointing somewhere inside the computer's memory, and this address corresponds to another variable. When we specify the type of a pointer, that's telling the compiler how it should interpret uh, the memory after that location of the address. If we say it's an integer, then it knows it should look for a certain size block of memory and interpret it as an integer. Lastly, we have functions. Functions are groups of statements that together can perform a task. Often they're reusable. When we declare a function, we have to tell the compiler what the name of the function is and what, it's, what, what type of data it, it's expected to return. Like here, it's expected to return an integer, and also what parameters it takes in and what are the expected data types of the parameters. So here, it, it, this function expects an integer a as one parameter and an integer b as another parameter. Now let's look at the user-defined data types. We'll begin with struct. Sometimes the basic, data, the basic set of data types in C are not sufficient for your needs. You can create more complex data structures based on the primitive ones using the type def, enum, struct, and union keywords. For example, if we wanted to create a database, a, a library database for books, we could use the structure data type. The struct is a collection of other data types or variables that are stored in a single block of memory, but it lets you access each variable independent, independently by name. So for, for this example, we could create a structure representing each individual book in the database. Then we could do it like this. We could define the data type here, where we say struct my book, and then we use open and closed curly braces to, to demarcate the beginning and end of the definition. And inside, we give uh, specifications for for all the different parameters of the structure. First, an integer number of pages. Next, a string for the author, a string for the title, and an integer number of years. Here, we declare the variable. We say struct my book md, and so now we've created a structure with the name my d, or md, and now we can initialize its various parameters. md.pages is equal to 635, md.author, the string Herman Melville, md.title, Moby Dick, and md.year, 1851. As you can see, you can access each element, or you can assign or access each element of the structure using the, the dot operator here. So finally, if we want to print out what the entry for this book is, we can make a printf statement that says percent s, which gives the, um, the title of the book, md.title, by percent s, so now the author, by Herman Melville, and then comma, percent D pages, MD pages, 635 pages, and then finally the year, percent D, MD dot year, 1851. So here you can see when we were assigning the values of the struct, we used, we used the, the period operator, and we were when we were accessing them in the printf command, we also used the period operator. Another useful data type in C is the enumeration, or enum. It is a data type that consists of a set of named variables called elements, or members, or enumerators, which are usually just identifiers that behave as constants. You can think of, uh, or 
in, in practice, enumerators are just lists of integers that you give special names to. So in this example, we might want to create an enumeration for the different directions on the, on the compass. So we can say enum and then open and curl curly braces for uh, for the definition of the enumeration list and then we can call the enum the data type direction and then we can say north south east and west and here we assign north to 1 and south will be given the value of 2 east the value of 3 and west the value of 4 internally the enumeration often treats the list of, of variables in the enumeration as integers uh, by the compiler but it's very dangerous to rely on that because there are some cases where it's not treated as such. So you should always use the the name you gave the enumeration. It's also worth noting that it's possible to assign a value to the enumeration outside of the values that you specified in the definition. So in this example, after declaring the enumeration, here we assign it the value of north. And then we test and see if the direction is actually equal to north. And if it is, we print you go north. And here you can see the result. Another user-defined data type is the typedef. The typedef is a keyword that's used to form complex types for more basic data types and to assign simpler names to these combinations. It's usually used to improve the readability of your code or as a means to abbreviate it. For example, an unsigned char usually is stored in the computer at, uh, occupying one byte of memory. So if we wanted to make a data type that stores exactly one byte of memory, we could say typedef unsigned char and we call this new data type a byte. Inside of the main program, here we can declare the byte and initialize it with a value of 07a, and in the print function, we can print out the value of that byte, which happens to be correspond to the ASCII code for the character C. The last user-defined data type that we'll look at is the union. Unions are not used very often, but they're still an interesting one to look at. Unions allow you to create variables that are which share a common memory storage space. They're a bit like structures in that it, they appear to be an aggregate data type. However, the main difference between a union and a structure is that they occupy overlapping areas of memory. So, for example, in, in this example, we create a union called sum union, and it has an integer i and a char, uh, a, a string, uh, str. And we, and we, dec oh, we declare a union u of type sum union. So what's happening inside of memory is there's a single block of memory that can either be occupied by the string or by the integer, but not by both at the same time. So the first thing we do is assign uh, union.string to, to, to the string hello, and this takes seven bytes. Afterwards, we can say union.i is equal to 23, and the first four bytes of the of the same block of memory which used to have the letters H-E-L-L -L, now contain the integer 23. We don't know for certain what is occupying these last three bytes of memory. It could still be O exclamation null character or it may have been overwritten by some other process. The last data type that we'll talk about today is the void data type. In many cases it's desirable to make a function that doesn't return or take any type of arguments. For example, if you want a function that just prints something out, it doesn't need to return any variable. And for these types of functions, we use the void data type. So a void, void is considered a data type for organizational purposes, but it's basically a keyword to use as a placeholder where you would put um, a data type and in the cases where there's no data. So for example, if you have a function that you want to just print something and you don't want it to return any any variable back, you can declare it like this, void my function. But it's important to know that you cannot declare an integer as a void data type, or sorry, a variable as a void data type. You have to only, void is used for only for pointers and functions. When you declare a pointer as a function, void has a different meaning. This means that a pointer is declared to a place in memory, but it doesn't specify its data type. You can do this later on. This concludes our lesson on user-defined and derived data types. Thank you for watching.